Howdy ho from the rainy place called Finland. That is, it's May 2021 and it's raining, it's getting darker and hence my grainy image quality. But you're not here to take a look at my grainy face. We're here to talk about necrophagia. One of the originators of US death metal, well, we could say global death metal all in all, or grandfathers of uh, horror metal, horror death metal, fits so many, no different genres altogether. I mean, they were one of the, uh, one of the generation that actually got to build something new, something to pioneer, something to uh, take their names to. And it ended tragically with a death of the main man. Still, rest in peace. Rest in peace, he might have wanted to go. After all, it was a band that was always about death. Even the titles of so many releases were referring to that, as you can pretty much soon see. So, welcome to Necrophagia Worst to Best. Now, sometimes when I do these videos, people start making funny jokes, you know, kind of a throwing punches, which I couldn't really see. You know, the kind of remarks like, hey, how can you say it's worst to best when it's actually best to best or better to best? Like, I get it. Yeah, some bands are total quality. That applies to bands such as, you know, I don't know, both or maybe. <laughs> You know, but there are bands which are not totally cool all the way down. I mean, they might be cool as a band, but not cool or good when it comes to the quality of the music, like from the very beginning to the very end. Some points, sometimes bands have these low points. Sometimes they go um, rather chronological order from the worst to the best. And sometimes it's quite the opposite, like I was talking about in my earlier Emperor one. But then again, there are bands which go up and down, like it's the usual thing to do, I mean. After first few steps, you kind of start evolving and progressing, but it's not like uh, forever going on to the top. It's much like in weight training. I mean, you have your ups and downs. That's life, man. Anyway, uh, enough of this intro chit chat. I'm here to talk about Necrophagia because for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's a defunct band. Once again, unfortunate death by, you know, Killjoy, the mastermind behind the band. And secondly, it was actually suggested to me when I was asking for your ideas, which band to do worst to best video of. And as I said in the previous videos, I'm going to mostly focus on defunct bands, bands that are not going to make more music. Why so? I should It should be kind of obvious and given, because they don't have any more albums coming out. It's kind of okay to talk about their full discography versus those bands which might be old as fuck but i mean they are still doing albums now i know i went through all the ready bands like dark throne which is still active and all that stuff but i try to mostly focus on bands that are defunct dead deceased and quit all that stuff now let's take a look at the bands Metal Archive site, which is always a good use, good use to uh, have a backdrop when you're talking about bands, whether it's about review, whether it's about doing worst to best video, because it kind of gives you a little bit of a quick glimpse of what's, what, what was going on. Now, before we actually go to the actual order of worst to best, it's good to remind you once again, this band started us already as 1983, United States of America. And as it's said also here, it was one of the first bands, you know, actually doing death metal. I mean, it's kind of a age-old debate, which one was the first heavy metal band, which one was the first death metal band. And people seem to argue back and forth. Was it possessed? Was it death? Was it necrophagia indeed? No, it doesn't really matter. This is not a competition, but it's certainly this band left a legacy. I mean, never became the biggest one of the scene, Biggest one of the genre, but it's still worthwhile talking about, especially because the band actually made some really, really nice albums back in the days. But it wasn't until actually 1990s, you know, when the band started their second phase. I mean, the first phase took only a few years. That's where the demo happens. That That's when the uh, first album came out and then it was gone. And now you might want, want to ask, so how come if they stopped in 1987, how it was possible 
to become a album with 1990, you know, ready for death. I'm gonna explain that very, very soon. But now it's time to start talking about my personal, uh, uh, you know, favorites with the albums here, like which is the worst and which one is the best. Now, uh, the thing here is, it's not as straightforward here as you might consider. And I'm gonna just explain it right here. Now, you see, Ready for Death is 1919 release. But what is something that most people probably don't know, and I even had a chat with my friend about it, is that Ready for Death was actually the original full-length album. See, it was supposed to come out 1986. And to recap the story here is that it seems like this got lost and that never came out before actual so-called first full-length season of The Dead came out in 1987. Now, these two should have and could have come back to back, back in the late 80s, before the band split for the first time. But that didn't happen, and that brings to the very first on this list called Seasons of the Dead. Now, in that sense, it actually makes sense, you know, this being the first, uh, in the, that is, the worst album by the band. And by no means, it's not a bad album. It plays old-school death metal in a kind of a very raw not very polished ways and you know it's kind of taking the first steps after the demos it's actually quite okay but nothing beyond that now you have to understand back in 1980s obviously at this phase you know because the rules of death metal were kind of a you know getting built by every album that came out and this was one of the first ones once again and as such it's kind of clear that even though the band had these demos out they were still figuring out what to do, how to sound and all that stuff. And as such, this is very much a continuation to the demo phase. You know, it's not exactly very powerful. Whether we're talking about songwriting, vocals or just, you know, the production here, everything is a little bit like, mm, yeah, I don't know. You know, once you listen to it, you kind of figure out it's not something you miss a lot, even if you never go back. Once again, it's it's not bad, but it's kind of mediocre in songwriting. It's not exactly very interesting, but it has all the elements what it takes to be, you know, a called death metal album. And as such, it's something that is very typical, especially for the older bands, you know, to have their debut album. Everything is right there, and it's, you know, taking the first steps. And this applies to so many death metal bands out there. Other bands too, but especially in death metal, this is like... Without this kind of album, let me put it this way, a lot of other death metal al albums probably wouldn't be out there. So it was like the necessary first step, even though technically speaking it was the second step. But anyway, this is my least favorite ne Necrophagia albums. Not bad, but very, very mediocre. And now we go back Ready for Death, which then again, after all these years came out in 1990, um, somehow... <laughs> And I think it very much fits the idea of the band. Because the thing here is, like I said, it's always been about death. About the uh, zombies and, you know, living dead and all kind of these, all kind of topics related to death. Muerte, if you will. And uh, like I said, Ready for Death was meant to be first. But somehow, because things getting lost and all, it became second. And in this respect, it makes more sense because, in my opinion, it's a little bit better than Season of the Dead. Uh, it's quite similar in style, to be honest. I mean, it's still one of those early works, so it definitely has the same problem set of problems than Season of the Dead. But in songwriting, it's a little bit more interesting. And it's kind of a curious if this had gone the other way. Would that mean that Season of the Dead would have something more progressed? Was it hurried because the original meant-to-be debut never came out back in the days? To be honest, I don't know. But that explains at least this reason why this came out in 1990 when the band was, technically speaking, uh, you know, quit already. And it took quite a few years before the band was once again back. Now, Ready for Dead kind of sounds moldy and as such very, very death metal, but it's not, once again, very original. These two are, in my opinion, much like siblings. They're so much, you know, alike each other, and I kind of understand why they have high rating 
considering that they're one of the early works. But I don't think I don't know if there is some kind of a, a handicap in a way that you know because it's so old because they were the, one of the first ones. Let's give that higher score. I don't know. That is just me speculating because sometimes people give a little bit of a handicap because they were so early. Nowadays, if you had coming out with such an album, I don't know if that was that highly respected. I might be wrong. I probably am. And it's okay. Just saying, if you listen to these with kind of a fresh pair of ears, like if you haven't ever heard these before, maybe listening now, um, you might find that they're not that fantastic. Once again, not bad, but nothing phenomenal. In my opinion, the band really didn't have their own sound. Well, at least in the terms of being original. Back in the days, they probably were a hell of a lot original in terms of, you know, because there wasn't really much of a death metal out before 1990s. But still, I mean, if you compare it to the nowadays, uh, you know, so vast amount of death metal bands out there, it's not that fantastic. Which leads me to the album number three in the list, which is Holocausto de la Morte. And that is when the band came out for the second time. 1998 and this is in my opinion a uh, step up once again from these two not, maybe not as big step as you know uh, the later on what was happening but still in my opinion you know what happened from ready to uh, season of the dead for ready for death season of the dead for ready, ready for death sorry um Basically, the same kind of step happened here as well. You know, the band was evolving into their own sound, you know, becoming something like signature thing to happen. But still, it was a lot there, you know, to uh, have as a kind of a luggage. You know, the band still had their, you know, ways to, in, in order to progress it with the sound, you know. They basically sounded like old school, first wave death metal band, but now... It was almost like year 2000 when this came out. So it sounds sounds like an album that would have been, I don't know, coming out in 1992 or so. In, in terms of uh, progress, I don't think it's a big step. But definitely with this album, they started to sound like uh, what they're supposed to be, like un unique sounding. So many other bands by this time totally had their sound figured out what they would be like, you know, Beat Cannibal Corpse, Beat Morbid Angel, Beat Death, you know, Baltor. So many bands had already figured out. But then again, this band really had these many years of hiatus. And as such, obviously, they kind of came late. And now, if you didn't know that back in the days, I for sure certainly didn't. It could have been seen like, okay, this is just one of those bands that came to the party a little bit late without figuring out that they were actually pioneering all that stuff. Anyway, interesting release, but still, in my opinion, not a cigar one. And if you don't know what I'm referring to, maybe you will learn. Then it gets more trickier, because when we step out of the new era of uh, Necrophagia in the year 2000 and beyond, it gets so much more interesting, because now the band actually had their own sound. And I'm not going to reveal just yet what is my favorite, obviously. I mean, why would I ruin all the fun? Thing is, all these releases from 2000 onwards are, in my opinion, the best of the band's material. But it gets tricky because, well, they all have their things going on. And they, while they being more original in sound, they are also quite different. Because the first three albums are kind of like old school death metal. And these are more what could be called as signature horror metal or horror death metal. And why so? It is because the band kind of started adding layers. And now there's a lot of what I don't really agree with these reviews. Like I said, these first three ones, they're quite high scores. 81 to 90. Whereas these newer ones, people don't seem to like them as much. For me, it's quite the different. Now, if I had to be pick the least favorite of the so-called near era of Necrophagia, I think my finger would be pointing at Harvest Ritual Volume 1. I don't know why it actually was called Volume 1, because the albums after that, well, they were not technically speaking Volume 2 or whatever. Anyway, this is of the newer wave of Necrophagia. The battle was now more melodic, 
it, but it, it didn't sound like you know one of those melodic metal bands or even what was usually referred as to melodic death metal bands you know i'm talking about the swedish style such as you know in flames dark tranquility and all that stuff this is still death metal i think the closest equivalent from sweden would be i guess hypocrisy because these two bands definitely had very very melodic parts in their music but they were still dark and they still had these strong growly vocals actually what really se separates necrophagia from so many other bands in terms of you know being a death metal band especially is that their growly vocals were never kind of a typical stereotype death metal growling but it was more kind of a muddy moldy like coming out of the catacomb style and I really like it. I mean, it's definitely not everybody's cup of tea because it's kind of a weird and a little bit out of place maybe. But in my opinion, Killjoy's vocals were like different. And uh, it brought this element of horror to the music in a way anyway. And I like it. I like it a lot. But anyway, Harvest Ritual Volume 1 is a good album, but it's not the among the best ones. And now we arrive to Top 3. And then it gets even more equal in terms of quality and I have to a little bit of a ponder which way to go next and then I would be saying it must be White Worm Cathedral basically it could be the other one which is the position number two in terms of being the second best album but I think White Worm Cathedral is here in my third most favorite Necrophagy album because it really didn't uh, renew the sound so much after what the band had going on in 2000s but it had these better melodies better songwriting and overall more versatility than what for example harvest ritual did and even though the style is kind of the same uh, it was more about upkeeping the quality rather than improving it so definitely a really good album there are lots of funny parts and it's kind of flirting with something very non-metallic i think pretty much all of these have these last three albums but there is something that works for the favor of the band being a separated from the rest and it's kind of a sad that this became the kind of a swan song of the band but then again it's not because it's a good album uh once again definitely we're listening to it's kind of a catchy and it's still very much horror death metal album really good one but still only third best album by the band and now you're pondering how much wrong this guy is why he is picking the worst albums of the band there for the last i mean obviously we have dead trip and we have the divine arch of torture and they're the least ranked albums of the whole discography i must be totally wrong it doesn't matter this is my video my channel and i'm setting the rules here anyway i would pick dead trip 69 as my second favorite necrophage album why so because in my opinion it really improved from harvest ritual volume one quite a bit not like a major leap but still and like i said it is pretty much as good as white worm cathedral only a little bit better a little bit tiny amount and the reason is i guess this if i had to choose the order like i said is that this really didn't bring anything new versus dead trip i mean the basically the boat are tapping to the same vein being very melodic being kind of a catchy being a little bit crazy like lunatic and they both have the same ideas it could be like they're from the same session even really good production good vocals good guitar leads and once again flirting with the non-metal music but it's definitely a really really good album i remember when i was you know biking to work and I was listening to that, you know, promo copy, actually, you know, the digital versions back in the days. Anyway, and, and I was just, you know, like, this is a banger. This is a really, really good album. And no other band really sounds like Necrophagia. And I think that's the forte of the band, or was, until it, you know, finally came to quit. And uh, that brings to me, finally, to the best album of the band. Now, like I said, it's kind of a funny that the average score here is only 53 where for me it would be 90 percent this is really actually one of my all-time favorite death metal albums and it's kind of a bizarre because this really doesn't sound like any other band it's so melodic it could be at parts 
you know, almost like the Swedish one. But then again, it's way more dirtier, it's muddier, it's more zombie-like. So it's catchy and it's full of horrors at the same time. It's like um, it's like this cover image. This, I think, sums up very much the feeling what I'm having here. You have these kind of deadly spiders. You have these madmen with skull doing like his voodoo magic. There is this kind of a classic horror elemental damsel in distress. You have that lady or ladies to be saved. But then there is this man of magic powers maybe and rituals and all that stuff and those horrible spiders it's like homage to old school horror movies and in my opinion it's a perfect cover for an album like this and in my opinion this is kind of like perfect horror metal album i really couldn't make this much better and as such it's one of my all-time favorites favorites in in death metal especially the more melodic kind now um I know a lot of you are going to disagree and it's totally fine. What I like people to do now that you've heard my opinion about this album is to give it a discography run. It's one of those bands that in my opinion never got the uh, attention and fame which in my opinion it would have deserved. I mean obviously given that bigger bands such as Cannibal Corpse is partially getting that not only because of good albums, but because they tour a lot and they've been active. I mean, through the same years as with Necrophagia, give or take, Necrophagia put out only half of the amount of albums and they never were that big in touring. Well, then again, which band would be as big as Cannibal Corpse when we're talking about death metal? Point aside is, those bands become bigger who tour a lot, who make albums a lot and keep constantly evolving, progressing and, you know, honing their quality on the road, in the studio. And Necrophagia, I guess, kind of uh, were left between uh, the rock and the hard place. And uh, I don't know, in my opinion, it would have deserved more attention, more recognition, more respect. But it doesn't really matter. What matters is that Killjoy and his dudes made wonderful death metal. Some weaker ones, but not bad. And then a few really, really good ones, plus this jewel on the top of the throne, or whatever zombie thing. <laughs> anyway, a great band all in all, and I think people should be listening to more Necrophagia. If this doesn't get you to uh, get the feeling from old school horror movies, I don't know which band would. Definitely worth giving a shot, definitely worth giving a listen. Uh, thank you for listening for my ramble. What is your favorite Necrophagia list? Please let me know your worst to best list for this band and uh, I'll get back to you. And also, should you have once again a band in mind I should be making worst to best video, please let me know. But remember this, defunct bands go first and only after that the bands that are 30 years old or older and yet still active. I have a couple of bands coming after this one at least before getting your suggestion or recommendation, but I'm listening to you, so drop me an idea and I'll get back to you. Meanwhile, Jerry 